Hi, in this video, I will guide you through the initial setup process for your HubSpot sales pipeline. Let's dive right into it. So here we can see the pipeline within HubSpot. Um, I already set up this pipeline, but I will guide you through the entire process. But this is basically what we will be working on in this video. I will get into more details about the different parts of the pipeline screen within HubSpot itself in a future video. So definitely like this video, subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for those videos as well. Let's go into the pipeline settings here. And first things first, we'll start with the different stage names. So let's have a look here. Um, I already set this up and one thing you want to do here is you want to look at your sales process and you want to make sure that these pipeline stages are representative of how sales works at your company or in your business. This will work for this specific demo case here, but your stages might look different. The things that you want to pay attention to is the way that you name these different stages. So as you can see here, I'm using the past tense for all of the stage names. And there's a reason for that. Using the past tense makes it easy for everyone to understand when a deal can move to the next stage. For example, this first one here, appointment scheduled. It is clear that a deal can only be created in this stage, uh, since this is also the first stage, when an appointment has actually been scheduled with a prospect or a buyer. The next one, needs identified, means that we had the appointment, we identified the needs of our customer, and now the deal is ready to move to this stage. And this is what we want to do for all of these. So like contract sent, for example, it's clear that we sent the contract to our customer. I will also share a pipeline setup guide that I created in the description of this video. Um, so if you want any help in figuring out which of these stages uh, are appropriate for your business or how you should think about the different stages for your business, including any of the entry and exit criteria for each stage, um, as well as any assets that sales can use for each stage in this pipeline. You will all find all of that within the pipeline setup guide that I will share in the description. So once we picked the different names here and you can just add uh, a new stage here, um, let's say, let's say the connect call uh, was scheduled. Um, Let's actually do connect call finish because I don't really like to create deals uh, when the connect call has just been scheduled. We can, for example, move this to the first uh, stage here, and this will also determine the order in which um, deals have go through your pipeline. Let's uh, remove this one for now again and keep it to these. So the next thing we want to look at is the deal probability. So when you're just starting out in HubSpot, chances are that you don't have a like an accurate ID of what the deal probability will be for each of these, these different stages. So to start off, you might want to start with a guesstimate of what um, the probability would be for a certain stage. So the deal probability basically marks the chances for a certain deal within the appointment schedule stage here, for example to be moved to a closed one deal eventually. So here it would be 20%. Now, once you're already using HubSpot for a while, or maybe your business has been using HubSpot for a while, but you're watching this video to optimize your pipeline, there's actually a, actually a really good report um, where you have accurate data on how to determine these deal probability percentages. There is this report called the deal funnel. You can find this in the sidebar under reporting sales analytics. Um, and then here, forecast and pipelines, deal funnel. And here you will see a deal funnel report. Uh, now there's not a lot of data in here since we're working with a demo account in this case. But one thing you wanna do here is that for each of these stages, you want to check the conversion to that specific stage. How do we do that? So here we can see on the right hand side we have the stages make sure that you set the correct date range here so i've set this to this year so they have enough data or at least when your account would have enough data it would be there you click on edit stages 
And then we're just going to pick the two stages that we want to calculate the probability for. So let's say I want to look at the appointment scheduled stage here. And then I want to know what the percentage is um, of people in the appointment scheduled stage to move to closed one. So I apply that here. Um, here we can see that unfortunately there's no data, but let's say that one of these would have moved to closed one here. So that would mean that we have three deals that were an appointment scheduled. One of them moved to closed one. So we would have a next step conversion of 33.3% in that case. So then we know that the probability for the appointment scheduled stage would be 33.3%. Um, we can only use the round numbers here. So that would be 30% in that case. And then we can update that here accordingly. Now, the next thing I want to have a look at is the conditional properties for each of these stages, because this is really helpful to make sure that your salespeople fill out the right properties within the system throughout the sales process. So let's have a look at that. So here we can see the conditional stage properties. And you can already see here that I filled some of these out for the needs identified stage. So let's say in this case that we're working with a company that sells custom gyms for hotels. And we have a pipeline stage that's called needs identified. At this point, we should know what the prospect is looking for specifically. So I added a couple of properties here that need to be filled out whenever a deal moves to needs identified. So here we can see the properties that I added. Um, and let's just uh, show you how we add these. So we have the project timeline here. You would click on add dependent property. You look for the project timeline and then you get to decide whether this is required or not. So I want this to be required because I do want sales to get this information. Um, in the next video, we will also talk about playbooks and that is a great way to incorporate all of these within the process itself so that whenever sales is having a discovery call, they will already have those questions and those properties right within their playbook right there. So we chose the different properties here that we want sales to fill out whenever a deal moves to needs identified. And after that, we would click on apply logic. Now, this has already been saved, so I don't need to do that. I can just click on cancel and that will be right here. So let's save this so that the deal probability of 30% has also been saved. And then I can show you how this would actually work. So for example, let's say that this deal right here now moves to needs identified. Whether we do that here or within the deal itself, it will work the same way. I'll show you the other one in a second. But as soon as we move that deal to this stage, I actually need to fill out these different properties before I can apply that new stage. So I need to fill out the equipment interest. I need to fill out the gym space. I will also need to fill out the primary users, um, the usage frequency, and also the project timeline. Like most of these are also part of the band model where we identify the budget, authority, needs, and the timeline. Um, the only one not in here as a property right now is actually the budget, but we could, for example, add the amount in here, and then we would also have the budget in there as well. Then I'll also show you when we would do this within the deal itself. So here we're within the deal. In the top left corner here, we can move this deal to a new stage. We say needs identified, and I'm getting the same prompt. And then you can see that as soon as I fill out all of these out, we will be able to move this deal to that stage. And that's that. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that we also have a way to make sure that sales uses the pipeline in the right way. And that's something we can do here within the tab pipeline rules. And we have a couple of rules that we can apply here. So we can say that we want to uh, limit the deal creation to specific stages. This is a really good one because usually you want your deals to move through each stage of your pipeline. So here I want to limit this to appointment schedule because that's our first stage in the pipeline here. I can also check that we want to restrict deals from skipping certain stages. So let's do that as well. So in this case, a deal has to go through all of the different stages. We might also want to restrict deals from moving backwards. 
which we can also set for specific stages or for all stages. Uh, you can limit who can edit deals moved to select stages. And you can also add an approval process for a certain stage within the pipeline um, so that this deal will require approval once they get to a certain approval stage. And once we filled all of this out, we now have a well-built pipeline. We have clear stages within the pipeline tailored to how your business works. We have all of these stages in the past tense to make sure that it's clear for sales when a deal can move to a certain stage. And we have all of the properties set up that we need for every stage within this pipeline. After you watch this video, you probably want to see the video on playbooks. I will link that one right up here, because here we will go into more detail on how you can use playbooks to really streamline your sales process within your business. I will see you in the next video. Bye.